Hey guys, in this video, I want to share five important things that men should look for in a woman that they want to marry. And this is very important. It's one of the most important decisions that you can make in this temporary world. After the most important decision of your life, of course, and that is the decision to choose Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But choosing a wife, that's one of the most important things in this temporary world. Proverbs 12 verse 4 says, An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who brings shame is like rottenness in his bones. This is so true. There are a lot of marriages in the world that end in divorces. And there are some other people who are married, they live in the same house, but they don't even sleep in the same bed anymore. Because the marriage is not really a marriage anymore. But then there are marriages that is amazing, successful. You can see that there's love, <laughs> even when they're 80 years old. And that is special, that is from God. A good wife is from God. So how do you find an excellent wife? From God. Don't just start to date any woman that you think, oh, maybe this or this one or this one or this one. No. Pray about it, wait on God and let Him lead you. Proverbs 19 verse 14 says, House and wealth are inherited from fathers, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. So, that's the first thing you need to do when you want to find a woman. The starting point is God, His will, not your own, because He already knows the perfect woman out there for you, who's also looking for the right husband. And if you're not patient, if you go and you try to force doors open that's meant to be closed, you will experience a lot of unnecessary pain and regret. Proverbs 21 verse 19 says, it is better to live in a desert land than with a quarrelsome and fretful woman. You know, in today's world where people are becoming more and more selfish, lovers of self, it is extremely hard to find a good woman because a good marriage requires a good husband and a good wife to be not selfish, to be selfless. Proverbs 31 verse 10 says, An excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. Now, the second thing you need to look for in a woman is a woman that puts God first above everything, who loves God more than everything, including you. Because if she follows God's word, she will be a jewel of a woman. A woman who treats you with love and respect because the Word says so. A woman who has God confidence because her identity is in Christ. A woman who has no lazy bone in her body because God is against laziness. A woman who is gentle, wise, kind, humble, strong, determined and acts in boldness because she abides in Christ and He in her. Now that is a woman of God. And the third thing that you need to look for in a woman is the way that she treats all people. This is so important because does she treat certain people because of their class, how much or how little money they have, or the way they dress? Does she truly care about everyone around her? And does she talk to them with kind words, gracious and wise? Does she treat poor people worse than rich people or rich people worse than poor? Or does she treat everyone equally? How about her own family and your family? And are there people she never wants to forgive? Romans 12 verse 18 says, If possible, so far as it depends on you, 
live peaceably with all. And Ephesians 4 verse 32 says, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. This is important because when you meet people for the first time, they usually put their best foot forward, right? So they, they only show you their good side. So you need to look at how, not just how she is to you, but to everyone else, especially when she thinks you're not looking. That's how you taste her character. If she holds grudges and easily says things like, I'm done with this or that person, and lives that way in the flesh and not forgiving people as God requires us to forgive, it might be a sign that it will also be hard for her to forgive you in marriage later. And believe me, people who are in marriages, they have a lot of disagreements because they, they come from two different worlds. And when those two worlds collide, <laughs> they're sparks. And so you need the Holy Spirit to help you with those arguments, but also forgiveness. If one person does not want to forgive the other person and they hold grudges, such a marriage cannot work. No one is perfect. People will make mistakes. You will make mistakes. And so she will need to forgive you. And you need to do the same for her as well. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 7. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Be very careful of women who, who make small things, that's not really an issue, a big thing. They're very dramatic and they make assumptions and they just look like they want to fight. Be careful of women like that. And then the fourth thing that you need to look for in a woman is a woman that takes care of herself. Not just her body, but also her mind and spirit. Does she have self-control to do Bible study? To keep her emotions in check? To eat healthy? To take care of her appearance? Or does she not have self-discipline? 1 Corinthians 9 verse 27 says, But I discipline my body and keep it under control. Lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Does she do that? Or does she lack self-discipline and see no problem with it? Titus 2 verse 5 says, And so train the young women to love their husbands and children. To be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husbands, that the Word of God may not be reviled. That the Word of God may not be reviled. And it also touches on something interesting here that I've talked to about previously. The only reason it says that a woman should submit to the husband. That's the role in marriage, right? It, the husband is not more important than the woman and the woman is not more important than the husband, right? They are equal under God, but their roles are different. And it is the man's responsibility to lead the wife the way Christ leads the church. This is so important. You're not the boss, you're the leader. Jesus was the best leader and he came to serve. That is the example He left us. He died for us on the cross. And He also washed the feet of the disciples. That's how you should serve your wife. And if you lead her according to the Bible, then she needs to listen to you because then she's just listening to the Bible. Ephesians 5 verse 23 says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church his body, and is himself its savior. 
Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Now, the fifth thing is this. Is she prepared to learn and grow? This is so important because, oh my goodness, it is one of the worst things for a husband or a wife when they are in a marriage and their partner always think that they are right. They are never wrong. They never want to compromise. They're so stubborn, so stuck in their ways. It is extremely difficult for a marriage like that to work. In Afrikaans, my language, we say, hij of zij is hardkoppig, hard-headed. Proverbs 12 verse 15 says, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. These kind of people who never want to budge and listen to someone else, their viewpoint to understand just how they see things and just to grow in themselves. These kind of people are whew, very dangerous. Why? Because they care more about winning the argument than the person. Philippians 2 verse 3 says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. It didn't say do some things. It says do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. So how much more important is this when you look at your wife, to count her as more important than yourself? I'm not saying it, God's word says this. Verse four, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. You know, most people who are like this, um, who are afraid to let go of something, they, they feel like they can't let go of it because they need to prove their worth, that they are right. And so when you look deeper into it, it's insecurity. And they might have low self-esteem, or it might be just the way that they were brought up. But if she is a godly woman, this is so important. It means that she needs to crucify her old self. That hard-headedness, that ego, oh, I want to be right. Jesus said we need to deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow him. So that part of us needs to be sacrificed. You and her. Only when you do that, when you sacrifice the old self and you don't live according to the flesh anymore, you start to live through the spirit and produce the fruit of the spirit, which is according to Galatians 5 verse 22, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of this is important for marriage. If you find a woman who are like this, who are open, you know, to change, to look at the Bible, to, to study it, to look at it, to, to change their lifestyle according to the Word and ask God, God, search my heart, show me if there's anything in there that is not right, that is not pleasing to you. Oof, that is a woman, that is a jewel. David also said this, Psalm 139 verse 23, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. He is the potter and we are the clay. So let me ask you this. If you find the right woman, are you ready to meet her? What I mean is, these few things that I just talked about, do you do it? You expect your wife to do it, but do you do it? That is how you test yourself. You might have been praying a long time for the right woman, but God didn't send her to you yet because you are not yet ready. So you need to use this time to grow in Christ, to become the man your wife needs and that God knows you can be. If you want to know how to be a great husband, 
and also a great father. And watch these videos here and I'll see you there. And always remember, life is short, so don't waste yours. Cheers, guys.